All right, everybody, welcome in to episode 20, Nate. Is this episode 20 of the Mind of a Coach podcast, or are we on 21 now? I think it's 20. Uh, 20 for the Spanish, Hispanic listeners out there. 20. So, so 20? Okay, gotcha. 20. Right, yeah. You don't speak Spanish. I haven't. I, dude, I learned I, – I took three years of Spanish in high school, and I learned – I knew less after Spanish 3 than I did going into Spanish 1. Really? So, that tells you anything about how I was as a student. Uh, kids, don't take, <laughs> don't, 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 don't use me as an example. But, uh, anyway, yes. All right. So episode 20 of the Mind of a Coach podcast, ladies and gentlemen, welcome in. We appreciate y'all for uh, your continued support. We appreciate y'all to uh, continuing to listen. Uh, Nate, how you doing, man? You seem a little tired today. No, 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 no. It's uh, it's another day. You know, uh, you know what I am, Asa, is I'm alive and kicking. You are alive and kicking, man. You are. Hey, if you're alive and kicking, you got something to give, and that's all the that matter. We're here right now. <laughs> How are you doing, Ace? I'm good, dude. Just trying to get a win over here. Trying to get a win any which way we can, man. Any which man, way. Man, y'all can. had some tough wins, man. Six six games by uh by four or less points. So um, yeah, I mean that that's tough. That's 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 a tough hump to get over. Uh, but man, one game at a time. Um. You know, every team you go through rough patches all the time. It happens. It's part. It's part of the process. It's part of being a player. Part of being a coach. Uh, but man, you know, we're we're playing right now, so we just got to get over that hump. We got to get over yeah. that hump. I mean, I'll never but, forget hey. Coach Alexander. I'll never forget Coach Alexander saying, "You know, we had this time at Belmont where we just couldn't get over the hump. Couldn't get over the hump. And then all of a sudden, we won a close game, and then we just start. We stopped losing the close ones, and we just kept winning mm -hmm. them. And then the same thing happened at Lipscomb. Josh Smith hits a buzzer beater against tech when we get outplayed and then we just yeah. want to run and we really never look back at Lipscomb. So you guys are Josh gonna, Williams. you guys are going to get Williams. That. Yep. What did I, I said Josh Williams. I think you said Josh Smith. I really think you said Josh Smith, didn't you? Good be. I'm drinking some Coke trying to wake up real quick. <laughs> Yo, big weekend, uh, big weekend for y'all, man. Ta hey. ta talk to us about it. Uh, yeah, swept the number five team in the country, Valdosta State. Um, the guys played well, um, just prepared, locked in, and hopefully they understand what they're capable of now um, when they're bought in, locked in. And honestly, it's just been – I mean, but they've been this way. We, we lost the first game. We were a uh, little – I think we just thought it was going to be easy. But then, like, they've come to practice. They've grinded. They've worked hard. And it's starting to show off, uh, show up. So. I'm, I'm happy for the guys, but I mean, who really cares? It's the fifth game of the season, so just gotta keep. Hey, still, man, that's a, that's a big uh, big block to uh, to add to the uh, building right there. For sure. Um, what how, what y'all's got? I mean, man, get, tell me a little bit about y'all's guys' mindset right now, so maybe I can tell our guys something because we 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 got to figure out something right now. How how I mean, what's up with y'all's guys? Tell me how they got to where they're at. Well, they've, I mean, you know, they've been playing together. I mean, we have a young group, but they've also played together. As weird as that sounds, they've also played together for a little bit. So, yeah. I mean, our point guard is a sophomore. Um, phenomenal. Phenomenal. He's doing a phenomenal job leading our team, um, just controlling our offense, controlling the pace. Um, our wing two, three, four, whatever you want to call it, our two, three, four positions are all interchangeable, all about six, yeah. six. Six five six 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 seven, and I mean they're just bought in. They're working hard, and they're just fitting. I, I don't think anybody's trying to do anything that they can't do. They're just all fitting yeah. the plan. They're starting to figure out their roles, and they're doing those really well. And they're exceeding and excelling in those. So I think just keep doing what you're good at, and the more we can build on that, the more we can like really refine it and find it. And you know, I, I just think we're gonna keep growing. So. Um, I don't think there's any magical formula, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, dude, that I'm I'm pumped for y'all, man. I'm, I'm keeping up with the scores, keeping up with the game. So that was a that was a humongous weekend for y'all. And then y'all got another one last night, Tuesday night as well. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. So we're sitting at five and one now. So. Ooh. Yep, but we hey, go, my man. early records can be fool's gold. So hopefully the guys are still locked in, ready to, ready and hungry for this weekend as we face West Florida. The team yeah. that's given our, us our only loss this season. Well, if there's one thing that uh, is always true, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. So, 100%. Uh, yeah, man. But congrats to y'all again. That's that's big time. Appreciate um, it, man. Nate, I, I'm a little – I came up empty this uh, this week. I don't have anything uh, that's, uh, that's, you know, really grinding my gears that I need to get off my chest this week. Uh, wow. But I do have a – I know, I know. Um, 
yeah, so maybe maybe I can come come back stronger next week. But uh, as of right now, I'm coming up empty. You're I just do happy. How, You're happy. Yeah, yeah. You know, I feel I feel okay. Uh, but <laughs> however, comma, I do have a uh, a little historical fact of the week, and we kind of uh, we kind of touched on it a little bit ago. It has to do with the uh, the top twenty five uh, the top twenty five poll uh, this week. And do you know we uh, except now I know I think when I mentioned it last time we didn't have any actual dates anyway. Um, you know, the, the last year that North Carolina or Duke was not in the, uh, was not in the AP poll. Seven, AP top 75. Seven, yeah. My fault. I almost, I almost gave it away. No, no Duke or North Carolina. You know what year that was? That neither Nin of them. Oh, neither of them were in there? Neither of them were in there. Oh, neither of them. Not neither. neither okay. Not, yeah. Um, so not just one, but none. None at the same um, time. Both, yeah. Well, since you said started saying the word seven, I'm gonna guess you were going with seven decades, and I'm gonna say 1950. Uh, well, okay, so no, well, close. For no North Carolina, no Duke, and no Kentucky, it was 1960. No North Carolina, it was 1961 actually, December 18, 1961. There's okay. been 1,043 polls since then. And then uh, just Duke and North Carolina, it was December 27th, 1982. I mean, that's forever. That's 40 years. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a long time. for 38 uh, to be exact, but you know what I mean. Yeah. That's a, that's a, I wish, I wish I was in a position where I was at a school that could, you know, have that record snapped. Yeah. That's, dang it. That's some pretty good success if it takes you that long to have a record like that snapped. Man, what if you were a new coach there and then you were the one that had the record snapped? You got to, you got to just, you got to roll with it. You got to just accept it and move on, acknowledge it and move on. Building. I mean, Stackhouse had to, you know, Stackhouse, they, they lost the, uh, the three point streak with Vandy his first year. So was that under Stackhouse? I think we've talked about this before. Yeah. I think we did talk about it on here. Yeah. That was under Stackhouse. Um, That's tough. That's tough. Yeah. No, you just got to roll with the punches at that point. Yeah, absolutely. But, absolutely. Also, I mean, if you're probably not going to have a new coach, if you've got a streak like that going on. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Unless he retires. Yeah. Yeah. So like a Pat um, Summit kind of deal, but right. You know. Um, all right, man. Well, hey, we got a pretty cool guest this week, a uh, guy that Nick, Coach Nate and I know real well. Um, he was our former director of basketball ops at Lipscomb while we were there, and uh, we'll get into more, uh, into more of that later, but uh, we think y'all are going to enjoy it, and uh, we appreciate y'all tuning in. Oh, what's going on? Man. Chris, how we doing? What up, bro? Kicking it, man. Just chilling. Y'all looking good, man. What's up? Hey, you looking all now high and tight up there a little bit? Got the uh, got the cut going for for Navy, man. We got a national TV game this week. We gotta be ready to go. Yeah, who y'all got this week? We got Army. Asa. Army. Oh, oh my. Okay, well, I should have known it. My fault. No, it's my good. Bad. It's uh, it's gonna be fun, man. They they're good. Yeah. We're good. Hey, everything good. You're well. Well, all right. We'll, we'll get into it in a little bit. But all right, everybody. We have uh, Adam Nottaboom. Adam Nottaboom. Uh, you started out as a student assistant at uh, at Xavier. You then went on to be a GA at Quincy. Is it Quincy College or Quincy University? Originally Quincy College back in the day. When I was there, it was Quincy University. Gotcha, gotcha. From Quincy, you came and joined uh, You joined us at Lipscomb as the director of basketball operations. And then from then, is it this past summer you got hired at a Navy? Or was it the no, – two, two summers ago. I've been in – this is my second full year at Navy now. So. Second season. Dude, congratulations, man. How, how, you, you good? Everything, everything good your way? Appreciate it, yeah, man. It's been good. Uh, obviously, as you've probably talked about many times, it's it's an interesting year, and yeah. we're weaving through the whole uh, the whole all the challenges. And I think, you know, our program has been really blessed uh, to have a lot of good players and and people supporting us. So we've we've made it through. And um, but uh, everybody's happy, everybody's healthy, and we're we're trying to uh, you know try to get that ultimate prize of making it to the tournament. Which you know I think, let alone playing games this year is a win but you know yeah. if you can get a trophy or ring on top of that it's it's pretty special so um, um awesome hey all right well i want to start off i want to start off with this real quick so on december let's see on december 10th 2011 you were a part of a pretty uh of a pretty big event that took place in college basketball <laughs> oh gosh i want you to run us through the whole thing right now Okay. What's going through your mind? How to? I'll, I'll give us some details that maybe the public doesn't know. I want you to run through the whole thing right now. 
Yeah, uh, it's it's a, a so whenever people find out I went to Xavier, the very first thing that comes up is a Xavier UC fight, and yeah. I mean, people I'd never met in my life, or you know, just pe people who don't even know college basketball know about that day. Yeah, and so that was my senior year, and we had a really really good team. Like we had two Holloway, who was a senior. Mark Lyons was a senior, uh, junior, excuse me, Kenny Freeze, um, really good team. And I think at the time we were seven or eight, no, and like eighth or ninth in the country, um, beat some good teams, um, really rolling. And we had, we had won the game. We had won the game easily. We were up, you know, 16, I think late in the game. Um, but fast forward or rewind to before the game, um, there was a lot of, uh, you know, chatter going on on social media. And the story goes is that one of Cincinnati's players was talking about two Holloway wouldn't even be a starter on Cincinnati's team. And, and it just, you know, it really got to, uh, it got to be, um, you know, even more heated than that rivalry already is. And, and so we play the game, everything goes, uh, uh, really well, uh, if you're a Xavier fan and then late in the game, uh, guys just started clapping, started talking. And I never saw it initially happen because it happened at the other end of the, uh, of the, of the floor. And um, next thing I know, coaches were running that way. Um, I was a manager. So like the coaches ran, players ran, managers are behind the bench, GAs are behind the bench. The GAs jumped over the chairs, yelled at the managers to stay here. And they took off running. And by the time, like everybody kind of like, got over to that point, it kind of was like starting to break up and guys were coming back. And, and uh, I was headed towards like half court and Kenny Freeze, who's seven foot, almost 300 pounds, comes out of this melee. He got sucker punched. Yeah. And, you know, and he was bleeding and we didn't know if like he was conscious, like he was just crawling out. And, um, but so we were trying to get a trainer over to him. And at the end of the day, like, you know, he got up and was fine, but it was melee. Like normally each team goes out um, opposite tunnels after the handshake. So you would, you would shake hands and each one would go out that tunnel. Well, they weren't shaking hands. So they had to figure out how to get them to their locker room, us to our locker room and guys are still trying to fight in the hallway. But um, unfortunately it turned into a bad run of games for us. I think the rest of the year we went maybe 500, uh, maybe a little better than that, but we were in danger of, you know, um, you know, not making the tournament. Luckily, we had a good run in our conference tournament and, and ended up making it to the Sweet 16. But oh, wow. it was it was something that will stick with me for the rest of my life. It was a crazy day. So, How close were you to getting in, an, in a physical altercation at all? Were you holding people back? Was, yeah, was anybody yeah. ever coming by time, at you? By the time I had actually, like, like realized what was going on, it all happened really fast. And, yeah. Um, I was never in the, me the big mix of it. But by the time people started to get separated – um, they were like throwing everybody back to their bench. Guys are trying to go back to uh, go back to at each other. And, and at that point I was kind of holding a few guys back and, and uh, trying to act tough, look tough, but <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to be that guy that made national TV as a manager in the middle of it all. And, um, but uh, unfortunately it was a, it was a bad, bad deal. Um, but uh, you know, everybody I think learned a lot from it. So. I rem I remember that man. I remember that like it was yesterday. I remember Freeze bleeding like crazy. I mean, all down his face. That was that was a wild, wild day. What's the um, what's the what's the locker room like after? What's the bus ride or what's the? Oh, I, I, y'all probably didn't have a long. Obviously, not a long bus ride. Sure. Or, uh, and then what's practice like? The, you know, in the following days. Yeah, you know, um, right after that, um, I honestly don't remember where I was right after in the locker room or whatever, but. Um, you know, there were some things that were said in the uh, in the press conference that didn't go over too well. Um, I think a lot of people were still kind of in shock about what happened. And uh -huh. then once, uh, you know, the days after, unfortunately, I think it kind of settled in about how serious it was. And, you know, player suspension started coming down. And, uh, um, you know, like you said, a guy like Kenny Freeze got punched. He didn't know if he's going to have a concussion or whatever and mm -hmm. things like that. But we, um, you know, had a couple of this. So... Xavier's known for a really good non-conference home record. And our next game was against, I think it was Old Dominion or Oral Roberts. I can't remember. Um, but a game that we shouldn't have lost. And we ended up losing that game because we had three guys that were out just because of suspensions. And we went to Hawaii for the Diamond Head Classic. And we played 
Long Beach State in the first round mm-hmm. who beat us. Um, they were a really good team. I think they had Casper Ware and a couple other good t- players that year. They were really good. Mm-hmm. Then we lost in the second round to Hawaii, and we ended up playing Southern Illinois at um, – at like 9 a.m. on Christmas Day, like not oh, what wow. you expect at a, you know, Diamond Head Classic. But, you know, we we paid the price when it came to our record because, like I said, we were eighth or ninth in the country, yeah. rolling, um, feeling really good, and then that kind of really took the wind out of our sails. But, um, you know, we got into conference play, bounced back a little bit, and, like I said, made it to the Sweet 16, uh, lost to, I think, Baylor. Baylor beat us, and mm-hmm. that was the same regional that uh, Indiana – Kentucky was in I think that's the year Kentucky won it so okay okay but uh but yeah it was like I said it was a uh, pretty tough there for a little while (laughs) so it's crazy how how stuff's like how stuff like that can completely alter you know the trajectory of your season um you know I guess theoretically you know it could go well but oftentimes it doesn't when stuff like that happens and players aren't usually ever aware of that (laughs) yeah no question I think that uh um you know, factors like that, and whether it be, you know, something unfortunate like a fight like that or, um, you know, just anything that kind of gets into, you know, a team that's moving forward with really good synergy, like those mm-hmm. little chinks in the chain can really affect its path. But, um, you know, I think the best teams at the end of the day are the ones that overcome those types of uh, issues, you know, mm-hmm. they can withstand and whether, um, you know, a guy getting hurt or, uh, you know, off the court incident or whatever it may be. And I think, um, you know, I think as you, as I grow as a coach, uh, I kind of learn how uh, to mitigate some of those things, and and hopefully those negative things that either on the court or off the court can be minimized. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, hey, ahead, um, I, yeah. So you leave Xavier, you go to Quincy, you become a GA. What responsibilities were you given as a GA at Quincy? Sure, uh, that's a great question, and I'll start with saying. Um, when I left Xavier, I didn't really know where I was going. Um, I knew I wanted to stick with basketball. Um, and, um, you know, I felt like I did a really good job at Xavier. But, you know, college basketball world is tough to get jobs. And, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, I would say my network wasn't great at that point. And um, th- thankfully, Coach Mack, who was my boss for three years at Xavier, uh, knew I was looking for a spot. And, and uh, he had a buddy who was at um, Quincy who they, you know, they, their network. And and he had co- emailed Coach Max saying, hey, we're looking for a GA over here. Um, you know anybody that would be interested, you know, guy that's an entry-level guy, all this, that, and the other stuff. And, and Coach Mack knew I was looking, so he reached out to me. He said, hey, email this guy. Boom, boom, boom. I go for an interview, and I get this job. And at the time, you know, I, I say this now, and I realize, like, how – bad my mind was back then and thinking that well I don't want to go D2 I just got done at Xavier we went to the yeah. like tournament four times three three sweet 16s all this I was like D2 like, like what what is this and and at the end of the day like it's one of the best things that I've ever done for my career because when I got this spot at GA or spot at Quincy as a GA to answer your question they gave me everything <laughs> like literally everything on a coach's um, you know job duties list I was doing and um, if you were to go, you know, get a assistant director of ops job at a division one or a, um, you know, GA spot or division one, you're very limited in what you can do, uh, both by NCAA rule and usually by what, you know, a lot of coaches kind of task their GAs with. And um, as a GA, I was there doing uh, uh, recruiting. <laughs> we got thrown into recruiting right away. Never had any experience with that. I got thrown into on the floor coaching um, and, and working guys out and, had a little bit of experience with that um, at Xavier because you were help, be able to help with those sorts of things, but um, really running a workout and uh, um, doing those sorts of things um, was all completely new. Um, got into camp uh, organization in terms of marketing and, you know, filling out our, our summer camps because we were right in the middle of camps when I got there. And then a lot of the operational stuff, you know, I was a second guy, second assistant on staff. And so I'm doing all the, you know, travel coordination. I'm doing all the gym scheduling. I'm doing all the um, coordination with other programs on campus, um, a liaison between other offices on campus, um, whether that be student life or uh, compliance, whatever it may be. So um, the responsibilities were, 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 were total, you know, and that's, like mm-hmm. I said, you don't get that if you go, uh, every other place. So um, that's one of the great advantages of having gone um, division two or division three, whatever it may be, because you can do so much more at those places. Yeah. 
for sure. And so all of a sudden you get the assistant coaching job at Quincy, then you make the jump to Lipscomb and you decide, I guess in a way it's a jump, but it's also your role kind of decreased because you're no longer the labeled as the assistant coach where you get to be on the court coach, but you're the de- director of basketball operations. What, sure. how was that transition for you? Yeah, that Hang was- on, let me stop, let me stop, let me stop. <laughs> True or false, did you cry when you told your Quincy guys that you were leaving and coming to Lipscomb? 100%, yes, yeah. I did. It was a tough day because um, I had been there five years. I started off as a GA, I was there for two years, and then I was a full-time assistant for three more years. So I was yeah. there for three years, and that program really kind of, you know, went on the up and up while I was there in terms of uh, we had, you know, when I first started there, so my first year I had a lot of freshmen, um, and they got older, they got older, and we all got older as a program. And when I left, we had a lot of good seniors, and that's why we had, I think we won like 25, 26 games that year. Wow. Um, and then when that was all over with, my boss, Marty Bell, um, who was the athletic director, decided to retire from basketball and just become the athletic director. So he was getting out of it. A lot of guys were leaving. Uh, the new head coach, who was an assistant there as well, wanted me to stay, but that was the same time this Lipscomb uh, job opportunity came about. And, um, you know, it was it was a chance to stay and, and, you know, stay at Quincy. But I thought for my, um, you know, professional growth, um, you know, you got to build your network and you got to have new experiences, especially when I was, uh, you know, a little bit younger and, you know, had the ability to move a little bit easier. I think that was really important to my growth. Um, and I also wanted to get back to Division One level um, was something I really kind of missed. But to answer your question, going from doing everything essentially to coming to Lipscomb and, you know, really having um, not necessarily less work to do, but fewer total responsibilities was, was an adjustment. And that was something that uh, Coach Casey Alexander and I talked about in our interview, you know, because I was my time, a lot of my time was taken up with recruiting on the road or uh, doing scouts. And those weren't necessarily my responsibilities, um, you know, at Lipscomb. So um, I think uh, we had a good discussion and, and good conversation when I got there about how my, um, you know, job role would, would uh, <laughs> I would adjust to doing, uh, like I said, less total things um, in terms of a checklist. But um, I think it, you know, it ended up being a, a really good move um, in the long run for myself. But um, getting to work with a, uh, an institution like Lipscomb, you guys obviously know how special a place like that is, a special place like that is. And if I hadn't gone there, I would have never been able to, uh, to experience something like that. For sure. And especially, so I, I don't know if you uh, heard, but I think it was uh, Coach Eastrom I was talking to, and we were talking about roles. And, and we've, we've talked about roles with a lot of different guests and about being an all-star in your role. And you were one of the first people I thought of when it came to being an all-star in their role because although you don't get the fame and the glory necessarily as coaches, director of basketball operations, that can even be tougher. And so for you to step in there and you went above and beyond in everything you did, I mean, whether it was making an itinerary and putting the map on there, I mean, it was just stuff that it was like, wow, like he didn't have to do that, but he did it anyway because he really cares and he's trying to do his best. So I I think even though you had a limited or not a limited, but less responsibility, it was still like, I feel like you tried to make the most out of it. Sure. Sure. And I think, uh, you know, uh, I learned really early on um, that as a, as a professional, um, you know, coach, working in a professional setting, you know, the main thing to always remember is the student athlete experience, you know, and everywhere I had gone, you know, uh, thank my lucky stars that I worked for, you know, schools and administrations and uh, coaching staffs that really wanted to put the student athlete experience first, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, I think that when you realize that you're not in it for yourself, you're in it for what they are getting out of it, um, you know, I think it really kind of changes the way you go about things. And, and I learned early on too, like when I was at Xavier, uh, our uh, one of our operations guys and our administration guys was Mario Mercurio, and that was something he did, you know. And that's something I noticed. So, um, you know, when it came to uh, putting, you know, the map on the uh, the itinerary of where we're going, or putting the weather on there, because you know, guys might need to know to bring a jacket or whatever it may be, um, you know, that really shines through. And that's a funny thing you say that, but. Uh, Casey always got pissed because I would put it on a card and hand it out to everybody. He's like, nobody, nobody yeah. these things. So I ended up finally at that point, 
getting the itinerary and uh, screenshotting it and texting it to everybody. I said, there, there you go. Now you know, I do remember that, man. We would come back in the locker room after shoot around and we'd be like, what is this little car with the whole itinerary yeah. on? Yeah. I loved it. I, I yes, it, it was it was a it was a great. Idea. I absolutely yeah. loved it. Well, two it, things I, I did love it, and I will always um, you know I'm I'm a pretty organized person. We had never seen we had never seen that you know until you. Yeah. I remember it kind of threw us off like oh okay he's really he's really doing this. I was always a very organized person. I think having an organized program is really important because you can right. eliminate a lot of distractions. But I would always get so frustrated when that thing would change. I'm like I spent all this time <laughs> scheduling meals and and getting buses organized and whatever it may be, and then. And then, you know, somebody, somebody, something changes for whatever reason, you got to go back and change it all. But, uh, uh, but no, that was, that's funny that you say that. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I, I, I do. <laughs> I'm glad you said that, Nate. I did forget about that. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome. Boom. I, I love what you said too, about the student life experience. I mean, that, that, that is what it's about, you know? Yeah. You want to, you want to build that, uh, um, that culture in, in any program, because at the end of the day, you know, you want, I think one of the coolest things that I see, and it's really strong here at, at Navy, is is that alumni base. And and there's a there's a term here that Navy uses it's called NTF, and it's Navy Team Family. And you could be walking down the street and you see, um, you know, somebody wearing Navy, and if they were an athlete, you say NTF, they know exactly what that means. And and uh, you know that's just a cultural thing. Um, but if you don't have a good experience at that place, that uh, there's an NTF right there. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I forgot all about it, but, uh, hey, there uh, it is right there. <sighs> black suit, man. Check black out my suit. tricep. <laughs> you know, that, that's not his plan at all. Um, but, if they had, but if they had a good experience at their institution, you know, then, then that carries weight for, for the next group. They see that alumni group had a good experience and it's just, you know, cyclical and it builds on itself and it snowballs into, you know, a really good culture. And as I said before, I've been really, really lucky to be at, at places that um, that have that. So, speaking of of student life experience, talk to us about the the experience of a student at Navy and what they go through. I mean, from day one, you know, first day of school to uh, to in, into the school year, whatever. Talk to because I mean, I got, I got a little. I you know, I went to Hargrave Military Academy, so I got a little taste of it. Sure. Um, certainly not as serious, or probably not as strenuous and as serious as, as a place like Navy, but nonetheless, still a routine and uh, kind of that backbone of a foundation. Uh, you talk to us about this, the the student life experience of a of an athlete at Navy. Sure, yeah, completely different um, from anything you could experience at any other school in the country, aside from you know, Air Force and, and Army and, you know, I guess Citadel and VMI or military institutions. But mm -hmm. um, number one, you know, especially at Navy, like the academic profile of our school is, is, is second to none. I mean, in a lot of uh, areas of our school, um, it's an Ivy League level institution, you know, academic uh, um, platform they have here. And, you know, it's one of the best engineering programs in the country. It's got, um, you know, chemistry and you take five or six math courses uh, every student does. And, um, you know, when you have, <laughs> when you have alumni that are presidents and senators and astronauts and things like that, um, you know, that, uh, that academic culture uh, really kind of stands up and, and screams that, you know, we are, you know, we are here uh, seeking the best of the best and um, not just anybody can apply here. I think the Naval Academy has one of the lowest acceptance rates in the country. I think, 40 or 50,000, you know, come here every year and only about a thousand get in. Um, mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a, you know, first and foremost, like your, your academic schedule is, is crazy. And, and on top of that, you have the military uh, obligations to fulfill. And um, the first thing I tell recruits when I'm talking to them is, is it's not a normal experience. You don't have, you know, frat houses or, or sororities to pledge to. You don't, uh, you don't get to wear whatever you want to class. Um, you know, you got to wake up at a certain time on certain days. You got to get, you know, if you're a freshman or sophomore, you're going to get yelled at for no reason. You got to cut your hair. Um, you know, there's, there's a whole gamut of things that, that are not normal compared to, um, a, you know, going to a Lipscomb or a Quincy or a Xavier or whatever it may be. Um, and um, some people know, um, some people know that going in, it's their lifelong dream to go to Navy. Um, but when you recruit athletes, that's usually not the case. They, uh, um, they're kind of learning about it for the first time. One of my first questions I ask is like, what do you know about the United States Naval Academy? And they're like, uh, I know the Army Navy football game and, you know, not much after that. And that's very common. So yeah. on our end, we got to do a lot of teaching to get them to understand that it's not, it's not at all a college experience. Um, and then you add on top of that being an athlete, um, 
because we don't, we don't, uh, um, you know, we don't, you know, we don't really consider ourselves to be a lesser of an institution athletically mm-hmm. because we want to win games. We want to win championships. And, and for the most part, our athletic department is a really, really successful place. Um, we're the second largest athletic department in the country in terms of varsity sports. And, wow. um, and, and everybody that comes to the Naval Academy has to uh, participate in either a varsity sport, a club sport, or an intramural sport because of the physical mission of the school. So, um, Wow, I didn't know that. One, yeah, so there's, there's a lot of physical components to even the application process uh, that you have to um, pass. But like, I mean, literally physical, like litmus tests and stuff. I mean, there's physical tests that you have yeah. to pass. To even get in. Yeah, so we have uh, what we call uh, the PRT um, that they have to pass every year. It's called the physical readiness, readiness test. Um, you have to be able to run a mile and a half in a certain time, do a certain amount of push-ups, um, do a certain amount of uh, uh, sit-ups as well. Um, and then there's certain uh, at, uh, uh, medical conditions that can disqualify you from being Certainly. a student here, like color blindness, or if you have certain severe allergies, they won't admit you to the school. So, um, you know, that's, that's a big part of it too. But um, the daily life, you know, you might start your day at 6 a.m. and you might not get done until 11 p.m. And you gotta go, um, you know, go to sleep for a couple hours and wake up and do it all over again. Um, to, uh, you know, kind of to fulfill, you know, the duties of what it means to go here. Um, but the main thing about that is it, it's not great for four years in terms of, um, you know, having fun. Um, mm-hmm. But the payoff for a place like this is on the back end, you know, yeah. your guaranteed job, guaranteed salary. Um, you know, you, you, you come out of here debt free because everybody that goes to school here goes for free. And, um, you know, you've got one of the, you know, once, uh, you know, one in a million experience in terms of your uh, performance excuse me, in terms of your professional, um, uh, in terms of your professional experience yeah. uh, in, in the world, because, uh, you know, professionals and, and companies, they look for people who have training like a Naval Academy graduate, you know, they're mm-hmm. leaders, they are disciplined, they are, they're workers, and, and, you know, that really bodes well in the private sector. So when you're uh, graduate and get commissioned and serve your five years, and you're potentially done with those, uh, those five years of service, you um, then you're in a really good spot to get a really, really good paying job. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. Long winded answer to your question, but <laughs> no, that, I, I, I wanted everybody, you know, to know, cause I mean, like I said, I know a little bit of it, but that, I mean, that, uh, that military grind is, is something, it's no joke. I mean, sure. every single, I would imagine it's this way, pretty much every single second of their day is all mapped out for them. And they got to be somewhere, they got to be having some responsibility, taking care of something from, yeah. you know, from the moment they get out of bed, put on that uniform, go march to the, you know, to the moment they walk back in their room that, that night. No question. No question. It's a, uh, it takes, it was kind of fun though. Like there was, there were some things that like I've found, like it, you, you found ways to have fun with it within the confines of the rules and you know, everything that you, uh, that you had to go through. There were kind of some fun things about it. No question. And there's not a day that goes by that, you know, as a, as a coach kind of, you know, viewing things from a different uh, perspective. Um, I sit there and I realize at least once a day that these guys are just regular old you know, students and yeah. guys and girls and friends and, yep. and you know, they and great personalities and they, they just endure a little bit more than the average college student does. And certainly, and, you know, it's, uh, you know, they're going, they're going to do some things wrong. They're going to do some things right. But at the end of the day, there, uh, there are some special people that get through this place and, and, you know, end up serving our country um, yeah. as officers in the Naval Academy or in the United States Navy. So, um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's a discipline, disciplined place but um at the end of the day it's a really really cool experience if Mm -hmm. uh, if anybody gets a chance to go here so that's awesome all right boom so i do three keys every single week i uh i started off doing them and the listeners probably tired of me saying this but i started off doing them and then i now ask all the guests because they are smarter than i so my three keys that i want to learn from you today what are the three biggest lessons you've learned in your time as a college basketball coach? Oh, man. I know, on the spot, boom. That's right. I, you told me that there's going to be some easy questions. That's not so easy. Um, I know. Hey, hey, hey. I, 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 had, I had to keep you on your toes. Yeah. You know, I think one of the first things that jumps out at me when I was a young coach, and I still am a young coach, still learn every day. Um, but one of the first things I learned about, you know, being, um, you know, I guess you can call it as an authority figure to some of these guys is that they haven't gone through life in the same way that I have gone through life, you know, and I think I struggled with that early 
um, because, you know, I'm, I'm an academic advisor, right? Um, and, you know, I was a really good student growing up and I just would grind it out and get it done. And, and that was that, you know, I didn't really kind of concern myself with schoolwork. I just did it because I knew I had to do it. Well, being an academic advisor. Or I didn't concern did, myself with much schoolwork either. But, <laughs> but, you know, I, you know, when you have to, you know, coach 16 or excuse me, 17, 18 year olds through, you know, a college curriculum, you know, they're not thinking about it the same way I thought about it. So I really had to adjust my, um, you know, approach to, uh, I guess, in a way, motivate them to uh, um, to realize how important it was because they weren't thinking about it the same way I was. So, um, so I think that's a really big key and really, you know, thing I learned early on. Um, another one was like you just got to work, man. Like, like everybody I know that's successful in this this business is a worker. Like. Like they're really good at their craft. Um, they don't, uh, um, you know, they don't, um, you know, take shortcuts. They're going to grind it out. They're going to do the little things that, that, uh, you know, details matter. Um, you know, if it means you know, being on the road, recruiting an extra couple of days because you got to find players or, or, you know, you got to go watch extra tape for a scout and, and get more calls or, or whatever it may be. I mean, that's, that's a really, really important thing. Like it just doesn't come easy. Um, mm -hmm. you know, um, for, for coaches, I think you have to really, really work because everybody else is working just as hard, you know, mm -hmm. you gotta, you get, yeah. you can't fall behind the eight ball. Um, so I think that's really, really important. And it's something I saw and learned really quick from, from people I work with, uh, um, at all these places I've been, um, third key, uh, man, that's tough. I mean, I think really it's, it's player relationships, you know, mm -hmm. like, some of my favorite times and, 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 and I, this has been every place I've been. I love if, if they'll allow me, I love just sitting in the locker room and listening to guys, you know, talk and laugh and joke and fight. And like, it's some of the funniest gut, but gut busting laughs I've had just by listening to my teams and my players uh, have a good time. But I think that helps build, you know, relationships that you can have, you know, jokes and inside jokes. And, and it really, makes me proud that I can, you know, I have a lot of former players that, you know, I've, you know, have, I guess, played for me or that I've, you know, helped coach, but I got good relationships with all of them, you know, and I think mm -hmm. that really says a lot about, uh, um, you know, the, the, the places I've been and going back to the cultures that have, you know, kind of, uh, uh, that I've been around, but being able to, uh, to have good relationships with those players and having them trust a coach to come to them and ask them questions, whether it's something that's, you know, tough for, in basketball or tough in academics, or maybe they got a tough home situation. Um, a lot of times you're their first line of defense. Um, and to have uh, players that can trust the coaches, I think is a really, really important key um, that I needed to, uh, or that I learned early on and, and knew that that was going to be an important part of my career. So, Man, right. that's great. So key one, life is different for everybody. So you had to adjust your approach to just work. There are no shortcuts in three build a relationship with players because players need to be able to trust their coaches. That's awesome. Boom. Yeah. hundred percent. Yep. yep. How was it? Uh, I mean, how, how was it to finally get a job as a D one assistant after, you know, have not having a ton of on court responsibilities as a Dobo for us at Lipscomb. I mean, I, I'm sure you were elated and uh, it yeah. was you know super rewarding. How, how was that transition? Yeah, for you? It was great. I, it was really tough leaving Lipscomb too, because uh, I cried there too. Uh, if you're asking when I left Quincy coming to Lipscomb. Yeah. Lipscomb is, uh, um, Navy was tough too because not only was, um, you know, the players in the Lipscomb program and, and the staff. So Lenny Acuff came on this roundabout story. But Lenny Acuff came on um, about six weeks before I left. So I got to work with him and a lot of the new guys on the staff for a few weeks. And mm -hmm. there were still a lot of guys in the program um, that were there from the year before that stayed around and guys that, you know, I had helped recruit um, from afar. But um, you know, when you leave a job like that, it's really difficult because all of those people, like I mentioned, but also the, the staff and administration of a place like this really care, you know, and it's really hard mm -hmm. in places that the totality of the university really cares about your program. So, um, but when I left, um, you know, it was, you know, it was a great opportunity for me to get back on the road recruiting on the floor coaching. Um, and so when I went to Quincy, um, the guy who had emailed Coach Mack about my job there, his name is John Perry, and he ended up being an assistant at Navy. So that network really kept me connected 
Um, so he called me up one day. He's like, hey, I think there's going to be an opening here at Navy. You know, get your stuff ready. You know, I know coach is going to be going through interview soon. And uh, when I got, uh, got to the interview process, I knew it was a really good spot, really hard opportunity to pass up. Um, and I knew it would be great for my growth, uh, great for the growth of my career to, to get back uh, to be a dis- Division One assistant. Because I go back and I, I remember, I'll never forget that um, one of my professors, who I love and respect at, at Xavier, um, you know, was a, uh, you know, he always, he had a lot of basketball managers in his class and every manager was that I want to be an assistant coach. And he goes, you know how many assistant coaches there are in, in division one basketball? And, and he says, well, take it, take 350 teams, whatever they're worth at the time and multiply that by three. So, you know, 1500 or 1600, whatever that number is, um, you know, that's how many division one assistants there are. There's not a lot. So it's going to take a lot of hard work. And when I got a job as a division one assistant, I remember that conversation. I was like, well, I did it. I'm one of those guys that got to, got to be. That's there. awesome. That's, uh, That's uh, amazing, man. So, but yeah, it's a, it's a, it was a cool, it's been a cool journey and um, just enjoying every minute of it for sure. For sure. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. <clears throat> That's um, awesome. Season, season going well so far. I mean, I know y'all said season. I, I'm not going to lie. I haven't been keeping up with y'all, but season going well. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Asa. Yeah, Ace, yeah, let them know. Let them know, Nate. No, we uh, we've been uh, we've been fortunate this year. We got a really good group. Um, we got uh, a lot of experienced guys playing, and we, we've been fortunate. We're nine and one right now. Uh, we're six and zero in our league. Um, we beat uh, George Washington. Um, we beat Georgetown, um, and uh, we've been. I think it's now eight in a row. We've won and. Uh, this weekend, though, is huge. You know, Army Week is a big deal. And with yeah. COVID going on, every conference has different new rules. And we actually play Army four times this year. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. So I did first, not know that. Yeah. The first two wow. games versus Army are this weekend at our place. Um, and we they both nationally televised or is it just? No. Just- so the first game is Saturday. It's, a, it's I think, 2.30 CBS Sports. And the second game is, at, I think, ESPN Plus. And then we go to their place for two games later in the year, but um, every year, you know, Army Navy is such a big rivalry, right? And mm-hmm. um, every single varsity sport plays what we we call the star game. Uh, so if you look at our logo, Navy, um, the end of our main logo has a star up above it, and Army yeah. Black Knights logo has a star below that, and and that's really more about the competition between Army and Navy. And so every year, each varsity sport plays what we call the star game, and that game. Uh, is the game that you know has a trophy? That, like you have to win the star game. You got to win them all. I mean, right, right. Yeah. You can't go losing the army, and, and but the star game is is the one that's like you better you better get this one. So that's so cool. I, I did Saturday, not know any of that. Yeah, the first the first game uh, is a star game. So uh, we host it at our place this year because it, it alternates since we're in the same conference. It alternates every year at you know who hosts it and. Um, like I said, we are really good right now. They're really good. They're eight and three. Um, they got a really tough team, really good players. Um, and it's going to be a battle. So if you like college basketball, I suggest tuning in on Saturday this weekend. It'll be, it'll be some good games to watch for sure. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Hey. I'm, I'm, I'm going to see if I can tune in because I think we play later at night on uh... no yeah. shoot. I'll have to yeah, watch it on gotta... Sunday. I'll have to watch it on yeah. Sunday. Yeah, we got a four o'clock game on Saturday. We all got synergy, right? Y'all got you got access. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. No, we can go back. I'm trying to watch it live though. Yeah, no. I know. Boom. Yeah. Do you remember getting a random? You remember that night, Nate? I I think you were with us. I know Aaron was with us. That we um we got into a lift. And uh, it was, and it was Boom's roommate. And Boom had only been there for like a, a month or so. With it. Like we weren't, we really weren't that. I cool wasn't with. there. We yeah. me, Aaron. I guess I don't know if it was Zach. We hop in a lift one night, and you know we're telling the guy where we where we went or uh, where, you know what we did where we went to school. And we said Lipscomb, and he said, "Y'all know Adam not a boom." We said, yeah. "Yeah." He said, "That's my roommate." <laughs> probably, if I go look, if I go look, I probably still got that that selfie y'all took. Yeah, yeah. But it's funny because when I came, I lived with him, and I was doing Uber on the side or whatever yeah. just to make some extra cash and. He's like, oh, I'm going to try that. So he did it. He signed, I think, for Lyft or whatever. And he did it, too. And i never forget it. And then later on, a couple – I think it was that same year, uh, I ended up giving Greg Jones a ride. Yeah. <laughs> it was funny <laughs> because, because I don't see – like, as an Uber driver, you see the name of the person you're picking up. You don't uh-huh. see who it is. And then um, he saw who I was, though. So he knew yeah. I was coming to pick him up. And as, <laughs> as I was walking, pulling up, I see him, like, strutting out. Like, yeah, boy, that's boom. <laughs> so 
it was really funny, but uh, I can yeah. already I see I his head, Bob. I remember. Greg hey, shout out to Greg. Greg. It's his birthday today. It is his birthday. Oh, yeah! Happy birthday, Greg. Happy birthday, Greg Jones. Hope it's a good one. Um, boom! I, I, I started doing this thing called. Uh, the, we got some rapid fire questions for you coming up. Great. Um, so uh, we ha we had a little bit of a not a slip up, but you know, one of the questions didn't go super smooth last week. So I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to make it a little smoother. Take anyway, time, oh, got twelve got twelve rapid fire questions for you. So here we go. Great. Uh, you ready? Here we yep. go. Uh, last technical. Mine. Yeah. I never got one. Never got one. So you never been kicked out of a game? No. no okay. I'm, I'm afraid I'll lose my job. Have you ever dunked a basketball on a ten foot rim? <laughs> no, I've come <laughs> close, but never got one flush. No. Uh, do you foul up three or let them go for the tie? Oh man, we. Uh, I don't think I should say, man. I don't know. I don't know who's gonna see this. You don't have to give your full. All right, okay. But all right, okay, uh, no, enough. we uh, we we foul. We foul. Foul. Yeah. You don't have to. It don't have to be. You know what y'all do as a program. It can be your own. It's nah, your own program. I think. Uh, you know, I think foul. I think that's the way to go. Uh, leave your best player in with two fouls in the first half. Yes. Okay, I like that. Uh, go for the tire. Go for the win. Go for the win. Suits or no suits on the sideline? No suits. Best thing this happened in college basketball. <laughs> <laughs> no uh, suits. Early morning practice or evening or night practice? Early morning. Hate night practices. Love early morning practices. If you could not coach basketball, what would you do professionally? Like, I mean, what what would you what what, what job would you want? And you can't uh, say play uh, in yeah. the NBA. Yeah, you can't no, say that. no. I honestly like my dream job. I think would be to be like like an equipment manager for like the Cubs. Like, I'm a oh, hard good. baseball fan, so like working in like their front office and like operations or you know whatever any way to be in the dugout and travel to all their games like just to yeah. watch baseball yeah. all summer i think that's that's something i'd always said i'd be i'd love doing i think cool i didn't know that uh what's your handicap in golf oh not good man it was <laughs> golly, i don't even know i don't even want to guess because i was really good for a while can you break 100 now like today probably yes yeah. i would confidently say yes but i could confidently not break 100. Right, right. <laughs> uh, should every team make the commerce tourney? Should every tool, man, that's tough. Oh, I've had these fights before. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think it's yeah? special. Yes, I do. Okay. Because I think teams, especially in college basketball, man, those teams can go on runs. And, and that's, that's kind of where you get the good Cinderella stories from. So, yes. Uh, and last one, LeBron or Jordan? Jordan. That's not even close, man. Oh, I, my gosh. I, I would, you know, I'm <sighs> Jordan. I'm Jordan. <laughs> That's awesome. That's I'm, awesome. Not sure I put, I'm not even sure I put LeBron two or three. Like, oh, yeah, I know. Whoa. I know. I get some flack for that. Right. Right. Don't, Don't watch the Navy game this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Don't watch that. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, well, thank hey, you, Bob. hey, Bill. Um, we're wrapping up here, but last question: Is there so for self growth? For while wow, self self growth, what are you doing right now? Do you have any books that you would recommend? Do you have any uh, documentaries? What What would be something that we could do? Yeah, man. Good question. Um, you know, really as a program this year, um, I don't know if this is a great answer, but uh, we might be a long-winded answer. I'll try to be short. But, you know, when this whole COVID thing happened, um, our staff really took it upon ourselves to, like, engage our team and not just let them sit around over summer and and do, um, you know, kind of things on their own. We, you know, we took it upon ourselves to come up with a lot of team-building activities and, mm -hmm. and kind of get into, uh, you know, a, uh, a more uh, social team socially distant you know kind of uh program so um that when you say when you ask a question like that you know I, it just goes to um you know thinking about what we did over the summer and we we did some group readings um we read a book by um i'm, I'm gonna kill me because i can't remember the name of it but it was coach k book um and it's mm. it's all of coach k's words um that are important to to coaching. Um, and there's about 40 or 50 words in the book and it's a very quick, easy read. Um, but reading that book and kind of, um, associating each one of those words, um, 
to not only how you know it impacts my life coaching but our program i thought was really really cool and i apologize i can't think of the name of it off the top of my head but i'm sure we can it. we can find it with the guideline yeah okay sure. you know. maybe you can drop the drop the link in the bio or something <laughs> yeah. I, I, it's yeah. coach k's words book words i can't remember the name of i gotcha it. awesome awesome man well hey um thank you for joining us this week boom where can the people find you on twitter and instagram oh yeah great question uh at Adam Nottaboom, really simple. Just my name. On both. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. On Twitter, on Twitter though, like this is I don't know. I, I love my last name. I love Boom, but yeah, it's all lowercase A D A M N O T T E, and then B O O M is capitalized. So. Mm, okay. <laughs> Instagram doesn't let you do that, so it's just <laughs> so, at Adam Nottaboom, lowercase. The Boom, not emphasized. Gosh, <laughs> gosh. I get what? more nicknames and more I, I guess guys talk smack to me with my last name than any any other name i'll bet you in the college basketball so that's funny uh, that's awesome yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll definitely go check him out follow him follow along with him as well as navy takes on army this weekend you can find ace of ace of spades you can find asa duval not on twitter he has still been hacked and but on instagram he is the ace of spades with a z on the end you can find me at nate5 underscore moran on both and you can find our page at mind of coach one on twitter at mind of a coach on instagram we thank you guys for joining us this week and we look forward to seeing you guys next week thanks a lot guys appreciate you having me on go navy beat army